Yeah. Uh. Feeling motivated right now, man. Yeah, we came to shake things down. This for my peeps in the streets. Hustle hard every day, we gotta eat. We came to shake things down. 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 My name is Kwame Samuel, aka Dagger. I'm originally from Virtuals and you know, spend half my life in Old and Bastille. <laughs> so I'm kind of like from everywhere. In St. Kitts. That's why I'm flossing. I'm hot man, better take caution. Look quick, let's slide and rush him. Out of space just like a Martian. I came to bring the pain. Gotta go with five hurricane. A whole lot of wind and rain. Gotta wait a man going insane. They're trying to figure me out. Originally, my name was Dagger Youth. But as I got older, I decided to take the youth off because, you know, coming a man now. But I can't name Dagger Man, so, yeah, Dagger Youth. But Dagger now. Um, I used to play in a band called the Razor Band. Uh, played bass guitar. And, like, everybody had a name that represented their character, like who they were as a person. And my name was Dagger Youth, which was, I was always the sharpest, always had the fresh haircut. I always had the fresh clothes on, so they used to say, man, you're sharp like a dagger, man. So, I just, just keep the name, dagger, sharpest dude. At like, around, maybe like, 14, like, I remember, when my cousins and them was all uh, starting a band, Razor Band, and I wasn't really trying to be in the band, really. You know, I was just hanging out. And Masood, who was a close friend of, who was a close friend of mine, rest in peace, was like, "Yo, why y'all don't let him play the bass guitar? He already has music in his blood, you know." And my cousin was like, "Yeah, let's let's do that for real. Let's I'll teach him how to, I'll teach him how to play." So I learned about maybe about three songs, like just those three songs. I couldn't really listen a song and play it or not like that. I just knew how to play those specific songs because you know they taught me how to play. I'm like you press that there, put that there, and that there, and that's the song. Just keep that going. That's the song. You know what I mean? Just keep those those cards going. And then as as that progressed and I became better and better and better at it, I actually became an actual musician. From then, like at 15 years, I'm actually playing the bass guitar. I'm actually playing in a band, you know what I mean? We're out playing sometimes, sometimes we would go out and open up for small acts, you know what I mean? And we were kids, you know, we had school the next day, you know? So from that time, from about 14, 15, coming up there, I started realizing that I had some kind of musical talent in me. And, you know, um, one of the, the inspirations for me, like I said, was like my uncle, you know, he played in small acts band, he played bass guitar. Um, had a whole bunch of other cousins who did singing and stuff. Um, Masood, you know, he was a close friend of mine. He grew up in the same community. Um, he was also an inspiration for me because he was doing music on the scene. He was an artist actually. He was actually actually called Donovan. He was doing his thing and, you know, he was an inspiration because he's from my community and we were close. So, you know, those people was, was you know, an inspiration to me coming up as, as, as a musician. That's how we ride it, ride. When it's your turn, when it's your turn, Back in 1999, when I decided that I wanted to do rap, because I was experimenting in my room for about a year, locked in and rapping to a masterpiece beat. <laughs> and I remember like writing the song because I had a girlfriend and she dumped me. And I felt so broken hearted that I wrote a song called I Wanna Know and I sampled Foreigner song I Wanna Know What Love Is. So the hook was I Wanna Know What Love Is from Foreigner. I wanna know what love is. I want you to show me. And I was like rapping in the verses and I remember like going to my cousin with the song and he was he was the band producer at the time and I was like, yo, I got this idea to do a song, a rap song. He was like, a rap song? Like we don't do rap. And I was like, well, we're doing rap now. So I rapped the song to him and I was like, I don't remember the lyrics really, because it was too long ago. <laughs> but I remember rapping the song and then he was like, yeah, yeah, he actually sounds good. So he was like, okay, I'll make a beat for it. So he made a beat and 
we recorded the song and then when we was playing it like it was actually on the band album so this was like the only band in St. Kitts and Nevis that had a rap song like an actual real rap song and Jazz um, Jazz is a musician from Nevis well he's not from Nevis from St. Kitts but he played in Caribbean roots in Nevis and he also have a band now called Greenhouse Band um, Jazz was so impressed with the song that Jazz said that that was the first time he ever heard a band or a rap song and it impressed him and for a while now he wanted to meet the person that did it so one time when I went to Nevis he was like yo you're the guy that did that song on the album that raised the band album and I was like yeah but nobody like it he was like what do you mean nobody like it I like it he was like actually I like it I want to help you as a rapper and from from there from 99 leading up to now it, it just started from there and it just you know went 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 until it became something bigger so um I, I gotta say thanks to my cousin for actually saying he gonna make the beat <laughs> for the song and you know kind of making me feel like i actually could do it you know because at the time nobody was really putting out rap songs like that at the time i think he had one rapper out in st kids i don't i don't know but nobody was really putting out rap songs at the time so my cousin who helped me to do that song to help me to say hey you know maybe i could actually do some rapping yeah i gotta big him up raga reds big up one time <laughs> Performing on that show at that time to me was an accomplishment because at that time Singis Music Festival was so exclusive. Like for you to be from Singis and get on the show was like the hardest thing in the world, man. I'm telling you, like, like when you get on there, you feel like I made it, even though it's just a Singis show. But you know, you have big names on there, so you, you, you being on that stage at the time was like, wow, I made it here. Well, I got on there because, like I said. I used to um, go over to Jazz House all the time because he had a studio over there, played in Caribbean Roots Band and uh, my friend Masood used to hang out over there too. So I used to go over there all the time and one day, Kusha Banki, Kusha Banki is a reggae singer from St. Kitts, came to Jazz to do his album and Kusha Banki was looking for, for, for new artists and new people to put on his record. And at the time I was doing some music with Jazz and Jazz was like, I got a guy for you, Crucial. You don't know him, you never hear about him, but he dope. So Crucial was like, I don't want to hear anything, let me just hear him rap. So Jazz put on the beat for a song that Crucial Banky was trying to do called Cutting Up Sensi for his album called Homegrown. And I started rapping and then Crucial Banky was like, look, I don't want to hear no more, just put him in the boot. He good enough. So. I said, no, 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 I don't want to do, do the song today. I want to go home, listen to the beat, and write my verse. So I went home, write my verse, come back the next day, spit it for Kusha Banky. Kusha Banky said, yeah, I love it. Let's go, record it. We recorded a song called Cutting Up Sensi Remix, which was a song that he had like years ago, which was a classic in Jamaica and all kind of different places, and we mixed it to more like more hip-hop dancers. So it was me, him, and Masood on the song. And then... Kusha Banki released his album and the album was getting a good you know, reaction from people. They loved the song. He got booked for Sinkis Music Festival that year. And he was like, I want to do the song. And my heart started beating fast. Because <laughs> I was like, I ain't never touched such a big stage. This is Sinkis Music Festival. To me, being on that show was like a myth. You know, really like, I'm never making it on that show. And then he was like, I want to do this song. He rehearsed it like 60 times to get it right um i remember like just running on the stage with a burst of energy not knowing what the hell to do and it's like i remember like just too excited way too excited just excitement going from from here to the roof jumping around all of us was like don't forget your lyrics don't forget your lyrics and then it just came out Started rapping, killed it, people loved it. Went backstage, got a lot of love. I remember signing autographs. I was like, wow, I'm signing autographs, man. <laughs> and then, you know, it was just, it just fun. And what that did for me was introduce me to people. You know, people was inter introduced to Dagger, the artist. 
and Fusha Banky was like, that's Dagger, he's the next guy to come. And from then on, people kind of like got familiar with Dagger and, you know, they've been hearing the name since then. Sometimes I think I live in hate of it And I don't even know who's fakering I'm so so excited about this right here. Um I got a new project coming, it's called Ultimate. Um it was originally when I started working on this project, I started working on it summer last year. I did something called Dagger Mondays where I released a new song every week, every every week, every Monday in, in June. And from there, I started getting back in my groove because I hadn't done anything since The Patriot, like album-wise. I did a mixtape, I think, with a group, Blunt Killers. But it was just a mixtape, it was just a lot of fun, you know, a lot of things, it wasn't really serious. And I hadn't done anything solo, so I started releasing just random songs in June, right around Shankis Music Festival time. And um, I got a good, you know, good couple of reception. A lot of people was like, yeah, man, it's good to hear you coming back with music again and stuff. And um, one of the songs that I put out that time, a friend of mine hit me up on Facebook and he was like, yo, if you, you should get more serious with that song because it could be an impactful song. And from, from when he told me that, I said, you know something, maybe I should take this project a little more serious. So I started working on it, started recording. Um, it's, it, it's probably like less than 98% finished, almost, almost here, almost done. I um, already started shooting music videos, um, a bunch of good work on it, man. And I'm excited about it and you know, looking forward to releasing it to the people soon. And I don't even know who's fakering Hey, what's up, man? It's Dagger. You're watching Between the Lines. Be you, feel free, express yourself, island expression. Peace. <laughs>